Hey guys, welcome back. So, have you ever been sitting around at home sipping coffee, surfing the internet, looking for a $450 revolver? Me either, but I found one. <laughs> this is the SAR 38. This is a Turkish made revolver, very reminiscent of the Smith & Wesson 586. And you know, with the full lug barrel and all that stuff, has a six inch barrel on it, different barrel lengths are available, but it chambers 38, 357 Magnum. And I wanted to see what you could get for less than 500 bucks. Now I've played with guns out of the Philippines before and had horrible luck with them. Immediately out of the box, timing issues, reliability issues, all sorts of stuff. So I wasn't impressed with them. So I kind of steered away from guns like Taurus or imported guns because I just didn't have much faith in their manufacturing. So we're going to take a closer look at the SAR-38 today because in my limited experience with it so far, it's definitely better than the stuff I've experienced out of the Philippines, but where does it stand? Is it a good option? Because if you want to buy a 586, you're going to spend twice the amount of money. So in saving that amount of money, do you get a functional revolver? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Got my pocket full of shells, my favorite communist band. All right. What's Jerry Mitch like this thing? No Jerry Mitch like. <laughs> Not even close. I'm not a big double action guy. I can't fire double action revolver all that quick because they don't practice it. Now, double action autos, you only have to fire that first shot double action, that single action after that. Now watch, as I spin the cylinder, see how I got it past that latch? Uh, I have a couple more. I thought I was running low. They shifted to the back of my pocket. Do, 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 do. Not quite as fast as an auto to reload, especially when you just have a pocket full of shells. Yeah, there's a little bit of grit to it, but everything seems to work just fine. Accuracy is good. Recoil is outstanding. Again, that finish looks like it's fairly easily damaged. Not that big of a deal. Utilitarian pistol. But um, yeah, like the ergonomics, like the double action trigger pull. Very good a trigger pull actually for the money. And then even the single action, very crisp, like it hits a shelf brakes and zero over travel. Just a little heavy compared to something like a Smith. Not super heavy, very crisp and nice. So overall, man, for 500 bucks, it's actually a really nice revolver. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business, which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. The SAR 38 has several different features we'll go over here really quickly. First of all, you have a Hogue style grip. It's a rubber grip, nice and thick, fills the hand nicely, well contoured, and even with my big hands, it fits perfectly, very ergonomic, sits nice and deep in the hand. It has a forged frame, forged cylinder, and forged barrel. This one has a six inch barrel with a full lug underneath it. You'll notice over here where the cylinder release is, Unlike the current generation of Smith & Wesson revolvers, there's no lock mechanism there, commonly referred to as the Hillary hole. It's uh, not present, which is nice. Now, the gun does have an internal safety, has a transfer safety inside that um, would keep the hammer from striking the firing pin if the hammer were to fall. So there you can see it's in the fire position, how it's flush with the back of the frame. And then when I release the trigger, see how it's lifted back. 
that's an internal safety in case, again, the hammer should slip and fall. We'll talk about that more here in a moment. Now, the gun also has different sight options available along with different barrel length options available. This gun, you'll notice, has a removable rear plate that houses the rear sight. That, to me, screams for a mounting plate option, which it didn't come with, but one could be made, if one doesn't already exist, to mount a red dot sight on the revolver. I do think red dot sights are the future. It would be fun to have one on a revolver, and this looks like it might be able to accommodate that. Now, you'll notice this one has target sights on it that are adjustable for windage and elevation, a bladed rear sight, and then a large ramped front sight on it. Again, different sights are available. Gun has a side plate on it, very much like a Smith & Wesson. Here's the screws holding in place. Now, you may notice some slight fitment issues that you wouldn't see on a typical Smith & Wesson revolver, especially the older ones. So there's little lines and stuff like that, but those are purely cosmetic. Uh, so far, it hasn't affected the function of the gun whatsoever. You might even see little imperfections in fitment like that little, you know, indentation there on the side plate. But overall, you know, the finish is matte black. The finish looks like it might be fairly easily damaged, but you could refinish it if you felt so inclined. Keep in mind, this is less than $500. So how does it stack up and is the gun safe to shoot? And these are things that I typically do, problems I discovered with my Philippine revolvers that I've had in the past that were very problematic. I could easily find those problems before I even fired the gun. How do I do that? Well, if you're looking at a revolver, especially a used gun that somebody may have tinkered with and tried to do a trigger job, you'll want to do a few tests when you pick up a revolver before you fire it. And these are things I typically do. So first of all, you want to make sure the weapon is empty so I have nothing in the cylinder. Now, as I've already mentioned, this has a release on it very much like a Smith & Wesson. Overall, this looks very much like the Smith & Wesson 586. So the weapon is unloaded. Now I'm just going to cock it, and I'm going to push forward on that hammer and see if I can get it to push off the sear. Now, even if it were to come off the sear because of the internal safety, the gun wouldn't fire. It would just mean the trigger's not working properly. So it's not breaking loose, so that's fine. The next thing I'll do is grab, the, pinch the revolvers by the cylinder back here, and apply just a little resistance as I'm cocking the gun and see once it locks, if the cylinder locks in place. It does, so that's good. I'll do the same thing with double action. I'll start to pull the trigger, I'll apply a little resistance, and at the moment of firing, is the cylinder locked up? Yes. Now, there is a little play in the cylinder. That's perfectly normal. You'll find that in most revolvers. The barrel opens up, flares out to a cone shape here. It's called a forcing cone, and so that cylinder wobble in, all, in revolvers is accounted for by the design of the gun. Not going to create an issue. Now, another test you can do that I don't typically do unless I'm having a problem is you can take a feeler gauge and stick it between the face of the cylinder and the face of the barrel, slide that in there, and rotate that cylinder, see if it gets more tight or more loose as the cylinder turns. That could tell you that perhaps the cylinder's out of alignment, but this gun seems to check out just fine. To load it up, just hit the release, drop a few rounds in. Now, when it comes to Speed loaders, I'm not a big revolver guy, so I don't keep a bunch of speed loaders in round. I don't really carry revolvers all that often. I don't know what speed loader might work with this gun. I'm sure there's one out there for it. Might even be the Smith & Wesson 586 speed loader. I don't know. So I loaded the gun up. It does hold six rounds in the cylinder. And let's do a little shooting double action. All right, so the gun does recoil very nicely. It, um, it almost feels like it has a comp on it. These are full house, 125 grain defensive type loads, although they're blunt point. But uh, they're pretty peppy, and the gun is not uncomfortable to shoot at all. Uh, surprisingly mild recoil. Now, you can also shoot 38 specials. We are shooting 357 Magnums today. 38 specials can be a little bit uh, more cost effective and less recoil. Now, let's fire off a few rounds single action by cocking it. Now, one thing I've noticed is that when a spent case is lined up with the cylinder release, when you go to eject it, that rear of the case can hit that cylinder release, and when that happens, you'll have to turn it, and then you can get those cases out. All right, we'll load it up one more time. I think I got one or two more cylinders full of ammunition in my pocket. Revolvers are a lot of fun, especially if you're a reloader, right? So you want to save your brass. It's very easy to do with a revolver. When I used to shoot indoors years ago, all the time, I shot revolvers because I was a big reloader. Now, 
And again, that spent case came back. Just rotate it, you'll see it pop forward. You can pull those empties out. So in a self-defense situation, that could be a bit of a problem if you're going for a reload. For me, this would just be a fun gun to shoot on the range. And hopefully I got one more round in my pocket, and I do. Now, one thing you can do is when you go to kick those empties out is kind of spin it and hit the ejector rod, and that can get it past that cylinder catch. All right, so yeah, very, very interesting gun. Shoots really nice, good double action, good single action, and so far, for 500 bucks, you just can't beat it. The full MSRP on the SAR 38 is $549. Now I found it online for less than 500 bucks, $465.30 to be exact. And when you get the gun, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a case, not airline approved, but it is lockable. And inside the case, you'll find the pistol, a cleaning rod, a lock, another cleaning tool, and I can't recall if I actually had, yeah, no owner's manual in the box. I couldn't remember if I had one underneath the foam or not. So this is what you'll get. Form-fitted box with the revolver inside. So at least it's not a cardboard box. A lot of people complain about that. Usually when you're looking at affordable guns like this SAR-38, you'll get a simple cardboard box. Heck, you can go out and spend $4,000 on an FN rifle and get a cardboard box. And people complain about that. So stop complaining. You get plastic. So the pistol seems to be a solid option for the amount of money that they're asking for it. If you're looking to stick your toe in the water, try out a revolver, you want a nice range gun, you can even use it for self-defense. There's no reason you couldn't. This might be an option for you to explore. It certainly beats buying your first revolver, going out and spend $1,000 on a Smith & Wesson and realizing revolvers aren't really for you. If you're a revolver collector and you're looking for something that's just affordable, you can take out and beat up and shoot, throw in a range bag, you don't really care what happens to it. We all like to have guns like that, at least I do. This, again, would be a great option for that. So the amount of money they're asking for, it certainly seems to be a quality piece, all forged parts, uh, triggers are really, really nice, uh, shoots great, and I like it as much as I can like a revolver. You guys know I'm an automatic kind of guy. So if you're out there looking for a revolver, you don't want to spend a bunch of money, check out the SAR 38. We want to thank you guys for watching the Military Arms Channel. It certainly means a lot to us. If you'd like to support us here at the channel, the best way to do that is become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the little join button and the thanks button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash either one of those buttons. You can help support us right here on YouTube. And also, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.